You have your hepaticas and a blood root right there. We are on a treasure hunt in search of petite woodland wonders announcing the arrival of spring. This is a sweet little plant, early saxifrage. It is wildflower season at Bartholomew's Cobble, a trustee's property in Sheffield, Massachusetts. Here is a great spot. We're standing by the Housatonic River. This is a show with a limited run. The curtain falls once the forest is canopied with leaves. To make the most of it, why not have a festival with guided tours? Engagement site manager, Carrie Ann Petrick Huff. I put an ad in the paper asking for volunteer guides. I said, wildflower enthusiast wanted. And amazingly, people answered my ad. They have come to fall in love with the cobble and really claim it as their place. So they have, what, three weeks to do their job? Get their leaves, get their flower, to get pollinated and make a seed. That's really their job. Brees Honeycutt, a local sculptor, is a guide. So is Tara Rockala. When we started coming to class here, it was snowing. You walk out, there's you can't see anything. And then you're like, oh my God, there it is. There's the blood root. There's the wild ginger. They're so adaptable, like New Englanders. You know, the hepatica <laughs> have the little hairs on the legs to help survive. And the blood root has the leaves like a little blanket around it. This is what we've learned, you know, and it's exciting. Patrick Huff says the cobble itself is exciting. A geological wonder of quartzite and marble formed 420 million years ago below the equator. Yes, we were south and like there wasn't a whole lot of North America around then. These islands kept slamming into us. So when you see these rocks, these are like the inner heart of these ancient mountains. What remains is a unique nutrient-rich habitat for plant life that has been designated a National Natural Historic Landmark. We have over 40 different kinds of ferns. The diversity here is unmatched anywhere in the state, and it's because of the rocks. We have acidic and basic loving plants side by side, when often you won't see them so close together because you don't have this exact geology anywhere else in Massachusetts. Nearby, in view of the cobble, stands the Colonel John Ashley House. The Ashley name is prominent in this part of Sheffield. Down the road is the hamlet of Ashley Falls. John Ashley came out to this area in the 1720s. Uh, he just graduated from Yale College. He grew up in the Connecticut River Valley, and he was surveying this area as the Massachusetts colony was moving westward. Curator of collections Mark Wilson sets the scene for two defining moments that occurred here. It was home to John and his wife Hannah and their four children and an enslaved household of five members. Among the slaves was Mumbet, who served the Ashleys for three decades. She would have slept in the kitchen right near the fire. She was helping to run the household and the house couldn't have functioned without her. Her duties included serving at meetings of political leaders who met in the Colonel's upstairs study. Particularly around the time in 1770, 1773, when the Sheffield Resolves are being drafted and written in this room, which is a precursor to the Declaration of Independence. Years later, Mumbet would recall what she overheard, talk of freedom and the words, all men are created equal. There was an incident where she was struck. She wasn't struck intentionally, but she stood in the way of a blow that Hannah was to give to another slave. And eventually she decides to walk from this house three miles to the home of Theodore Sedgwick, who was a local lawyer and friend of Colonel Ashley, with the intent of suing for her freedom under the new state constitution. So within the state of Massachusetts, She's the first person freed under the ruling of the state constitution. Once free, Mumbet adopted the name Elizabeth Freeman and lived out her life with the Sedgwick family in Stockbridge. Today, the Ashley Homestead is a place to reflect and walk in the footsteps of those who paved the way for freedom. And you can come, you can sit down in this room and get a sense of the tremendous amount of history that took place here. Elizabeth Freeman worked as a governess in the Sedgwick household until the children were grown, and then she and her daughter bought their own house in Stockbridge. Elizabeth is buried in the Sedgwick family plot, the only non-family member. 
And if you're interested in the wildflower walks at Bartholomew's Cobble, they happen on Saturdays and Sundays through Mother's Day.